Hello everyone, I'm Fahim, lead software engineer at Epscot. In today's webinar, I'm going to talk about uh, MongoDB Archiver, which is a backup and uh, point in time recovery solution of MongoDB database. So this is the contents of the today's webinar. First, I'm going to introduce the MongoDB Archiver custom resource. Then I'm going to talk about how does backup work using MongoDB Archiver. Then how does restore work using MongoDB Archiver. And then I will show a demo of uh, the point in time recovery of a MongoDB replica set. Then I'll talk about the upcoming features of the Archiver. And finally, we'll have a question answer session where I'll try to answer some of your questions. So let's dive into the webinar. First, uh, what is MongoDB Archiver? MongoDB Archiver is a custom resource for MongoDB database managed by KubeDB. So this MongoDB Archiver resource is actually used for the backup of MongoDB database. And it also supports point in time recovery of the database. It takes a snapshot of the whole database periodically that you can customize using the MongoDB Archiver. And it also takes the backup of the op block in the real time using the WALZ. So many of you know that what is op block, but uh, those who don't know, the op block is a MongoDB a document that keeps track of all the transaction that happens uh, in the MongoDB. So if we have the op block, we can actually uh, go back in time to re uh, restore at any point of the database. Currently, this MongoDB archiver uh, only <clears throat> supports replica set database. Okay. So now we'll see how backup works using MongoDB archiver. So this is the flow of the backup. So the user first creates a MongoDB database. So this database is watched by the KubeDB uh, provisioner operator. So the, the database, uh, the operator watches this MongoDB and uh, it creates the uh, components such as stateful set, PVCs, services, etc. all the components that needs to function the database properly. Then the user creates the MongoDB archiver custom resource. This MongoDB archiver custom resource uh, actually uh, the user can create it beforehand before applying the database because it can actually select multiple databases. So it has all the configuration for the backup and restore. So user can uh, create it beforehand and create the database that is selected by this MongoDB archiver. So currently our MongoDB uh, database that the user provided already selected by this MongoDB archiver. So when the MongoDB archiver uh, is created by the user, the provisioner operator actually watches for this MongoDB archiver. So when it finds this MongoDB archiver, it and sees that it actually selects this MongoDB uh, database, then uh, it creates a backup configuration to take backup of the snapshot and manifests. So this uh, backup configuration has the, it takes the configuration from actually from the MongoDB archiver. In the MongoDB archiver, we, uh, the user provides all the necessary information so that the backup can happen. This information is uh, co conveyed to the backup configuration. The provision operator also creates a sidekick. The, the, the sidekick takes the op log backup of the MongoDB in real time. And both of the op log and the volume snapshot that are created by the backup configuration are stored in the cloud. So let's uh, see what are the steps of the uh, backup uh, using MongoDB archiver. So there are actually only two steps. Uh, the first step is uh, the operator creates the backup configuration. So you have already heard about the backup configuration here. So you may ask what is backup configuration? So the backup configuration is a custom resource that is managed by QStash, which is the product of apps code. This is the backup and restore solution uh, of apps code. So using this backup configuration, <clears throat> the database manifests such as uh, authentication secret, configuration secret, certificates, etc. are backed up, backed up by this uh, backup configuration. 
all the configuration are stated here by the MongoDB archiver so that the backup can happen. Also, it can take the volume snapshot. So uh, the backup configuration is also responsible for taking the volume snapshot of the database. Then after creating the backup configuration, the operator creates a sidekick. The sidekick uh, is also a custom resource developed by Fscode. So why do we need it? Uh, it is used for uh, uh, running the sidecars of a port as an individual port, but it acts as in the sidecar of that port. Uh, it takes the real time backup, the, uh, backup of the uplock using WASD. So why do we need this sidekick? Because uh, when we are deploying a database, we wa don't want to restart the database unnecessarily. So when we are uh, adding a sidecar into the database ports, the database ports uh, has a, another container in it. So if we want to add another container uh, to that port, we must restart the port. If we want to remove any container from the port, we must restart the, the port. So you don't want to do that so that we uh, created this sidekick uh, custom resource that is used uh, as an individual port that can act as a sidecar of the database and it can actually read the data from the port that we are working with. So as we can uh, create it as an individual port, we don't have, <clears throat> we don't need to uh, add as a sidecar and we don't need to restart the port uh, every time we add or remove MongoDB archiver into our database. So this is the backup flow of the MongoDB archiver. Now let's see the MongoDB restore uh, workflow. <clears throat> so to restore the database, a user creates the MongoDB. In the MongoDB, he actually provides the information it, at which time he wants to recover. Uh, the point in time uh, he wants to recover the database. So the provisional operator watches this uh, MongoDB database and sees that it it wants to restore from a previous backup. So it creates a restore session to restore the manifest such as authentication secret, configuration secret, etc. As you can see the here we have uh, created the backup session to create the volume snapshot and the manifest. So this uh, restore session is actually used to uh, used to uh, restore those uh, manifest and uh, uh, data to uh, snapshot to restore. Then we uh, restore the PVCs uh, from the volume snapshot. Uh, after the PVCs are created, then we sync the stateful set services uh, to so that the database can come uh, come up so when the database is uh, brought up and uh, that uh, all the pvcs that are created here are used by the stateful set ports and uh, the port is now in running state uh, so the database can now accept connection but our database is not fully restored yet because we haven't restored the upload so then the operator creates a, a restore job that actually restores the upload from the cloud and uh, the restore is completed. So this is the restore flow of the database. Let's see what are the main parts here. So there are actually three parts. The first is manifest restore. So the uh, operator first creates a restore session to restore the manifest such as uh, authentication secret, configuration secret, etc. So the restore session is a, a part of the cube db cube stash, uh, same as the backup configuration. So the data we back up using the backup configuration is restored using the restore session. So uh, the operator creates this restore session and waits for the restore session to be successful. When the restore session is successful, that means that uh, the <clears throat> uh, manifest uh, is already restored successfully. So we can use those authentic authentication secret and config secret to uh, bring up our database. So when the manifest restoration is completed, we uh, go. The operator goes to the second step, which is the PVC restore. So in this step, uh, the 
operator uh, as you can uh, as you have already seen in this step the cube stage operator using the backup configuration takes the snapshot uh, periodically in the storage cloud storage so there may be like 10 to 15 or 100 volume snapshot but we need only one snapshot to re uh, restore our database so using the recovery time stream which is the closest uh, volume snapshot the operator finds that volume snapshot and uh, uses that volume snapshot to create the first pvc of the uh, database so the first pvc in the first pvc we use the volume snapshot that we found in this step to you know, create the create the first pvc after the first pvc is created from that volume snapshot it has uh, some data and uh, we actually change the configuration, some configuration in that PVC because when the we created the MongoDB at first and take backup, the DNS can be different. Like uh, we deployed this MongoDB with a different name and different uh, namespace uh, in a different namespace. But when we want to restore that MongoDB, we gave a different name and we want to different, uh, we want a, a, it in a different namespace. So that DNS will change in internally. So we have to use those uh, new DNS and change the configuration in the first PVC. So we'll change those information here. Then using this first PVC, we'll create the other PVCs of the replica set. Like if there are three replicas uh, in the uh, replica set, the first replica uh, set has one PVC and other has two PVC. So there are total of three PVCs. The, after the first PVC is created, we use this PVC as the source of the other PVCs. So when those other PVCs are uh, brought up, those PVC has uh, the exact same data as the first PVC. So now when all the three PVCs are created successfully, then the operators resyncs the uh, stateful set services, etc. So the stateful set now can use those three PVCs that were created, the stateful set creates the pod. The pod doesn't create a PVC, the, the, it uses the existing PVC that we created manually. So the pod uh, is now brought up uh, uh, and goes into running state and uh, those pod now uh, can be connected and uh, run, used to run the, uh, run the database. So the uh, operator now waits for the database to accept connection. As all the ports are now in running state, the operator checks that if the, they're accepting connection, if they're accepting connection, then the PVC restoration is completed. <clears throat> so we have completed the first part of our backup. So now finally, the op-lock restoration. So as you can see, we have chosen a volume snapshot that is closest to the recovery time step. So there is a gap between the volume snapshot time step and the recovery time step. So we'll use those uh, to reco be recovered from the op-lock. So to do that, the operator creates a restore job. Uh, in the restore job, the op-lock, uh, it restores the op-lock in the range uh, from volume snapshot time, the volume snapshot that we created earlier, this volume snapshot. And at this time, and the, till the recovery time stamp that you, the user have provided to go in point in time. So this is the range for the uplock. So the far, um, first it uh, uh, restored from the volume snapshot till the volume snapshot time. Then the others are being restored from the uh, recovery time stamp. This is possible because we have taken the backup of the up look in real time in the cloud storage using the sidekick. So finally, the operator waits for the jobs to finish. When the jobs is uh, finished successfully, that means our restoration is completed. Now we have all the data till the recovery time stamp. Okay, now let's jump into the demo. So I am using <clears throat> KeepCTL version 1.25 and uh, I'm using a Linode cluster here. 
I also have a, a MongoDB database already deployed and uh, it already has the data backup uh, because uh, the data backup can, may take a lot of time. So this is the MongoDB archiver uh, that I already deployed in the cluster. So the kind is MongoDB archiver. And uh, in the spec, you can see that uh, there is a field called pause. We have provided it, it as false. So if you pro want to pause the MongoDB archiver, that means you don't want to take the backup of the database anymore for some time, you can actually pause the data uh, MongoDB archiver. Mm -hmm. So when you pause the MongoDB archiver, the backup configuration for the database is uh, also paused. So the backup configuration also has a mechanism of pause. So when the uh, backup configuration is paused, the manifest backup and uh, uh, the uh, volume snapshot backup is actually paused. So the those are not taken when the uh, MongoDB archive is paused. Then there is Sidekick, which takes the uh, uplog backup. Oh, uh, so we actually delete the Sidekick so that it doesn't take any more uplog backup. So when you provide the pause field as true, uh, the MongoDB, uh, uh, the Sidekick is deleted and the more backup configuration is actually paused. But when you bring this, uh, uh, when you want to bring up the uh, backup again, you can change the pause field as true or false so that the uh, MongoDB archive is unpaused and the backup configuration now can now take the backup again and the sidekick can now take the uplock backup again. So to do, do this step, we don't have to uh, restart any of the port because we have used uh, the sidekick uh, as it uh, takes the upload backup uh, from outside. So now there is a field called databases. It actually selects the databases that is uh, taken backup uh, using this MongoDB archiver. So as you can see, there is a field called namespace we are providing from same. So as our MongoDB archiver is in demo namespace, so it will select the databases from this demo namespace. Also in the selector, we are providing the archiver true levels. So if we create a, a database with archiver true, this uh, in the demo namespace, the MongoDB archiver will select that uh, database and uh, uh, start backing up the database. Then we are providing a retention policy Retention policy is a field, uh, a, a custom resource of kubestash. We are providing a reference of that uh, retention policy here. The retention policy is actually used for the uh, backup, of how long the backup will uh, stay. So like if you provide the, you want to uh, take backup of last 30 days, so you can go in any point of time in the last 30 days. So you can provide that information in the retention policy. Then there is a field called full backup section. In this uh, full backup section, you can provide the uh, things that you want to be re uh, reflected into the backup configuration. So we are using the driver as CSF snapshotter. We only support this uh, today. The CSF snapshotter has some fields like uh, volume snapshot class name. The class it is used to take the volume snapshot. So you can use that volume snapshot class name here. Also, there is a scheduler field. You can provide a schedule. I have provided here to take backup in every five minutes. So it will take backup in every five minutes. Also, if you want to change the resources of the uh, scheduler uh, backup configuration, you can provide those information here. And finally, we have provided a backup storage where our data will be backed up in the cloud storage, uh, it is a Linode storage bucket. We'll uh, store all our data in the Linode bucket. So it is also a custom resource by KubeTest. We are providing the reference of that backup storage here. Then we are going to deploy a MongoDB database, we, which we already deployed in our uh, cluster. As you can see here, it's in ready state. So it has, uh, uh, as you can see, we're providing the levels as the uh, archive are true because uh, we are uh, selecting the database with levels archive are true. So we are providing this level archive true here. Also this 
uh, MongoDB database is in uh, demo namespace because uh, we are selecting the same namespace demo. So uh, this MongoDB will be selected by this MongoDB archiver. So we are, uh, these are general configuration of the MongoDB replica set. Here we are providing the version as 4.4.6 and the replica set name here. We have, you want three replicas of the replica set. Uh, the, in the port template section, we are providing some basic resources like CPU memory. Okay? And in the storage section, we are using uh, the Longhorn uh, storage driver. So we are writing the Longhorn storage class name here. And we want one GB storage for uh, each of the replicas. So we are providing rich, uh, storage request as one GB here. Finally, after we already taken backup of this database using MongoDB Archiver, we want to restore it in a, another database. So this is the YML of the another database that we want to take backup. <clears throat> here, as you can see, this part is exactly same as the part we have provided here. Just here, we have, we have provided a init section here in the Archiver. Here we are providing the recovery time step at which point of time we want to go and the repository where the database is backed up. So if we deploy this database, the, the, it will <coughs> take backup from the, it will be restored from this repository in a, at this point of time. It will have all the, uh, all the same configuration as our database here. Okay, so let's start. First, uh, let's exec into our MongoDB uh, port here. I am executing into this port here. I'm showing the all the ports. These three are is the port of this MongoDB. Our uh, other ports are from the backup that happened. So we are connected to the first port of the database. Let's try to connect to the MongoDB. We are connected to the first uh, MongoDB instance, which is the primary, as you can see here. Let's check the databases. So there are these databases. So we have inserted some data in the test uh, database. Let's use that. Let's check the collection in the database. So it has only one collections name kubedb. Let's see the data. As you can see, it has some data in the format name, and uh, it has like 1500 data uh, in the format name, a snapshot number, then a timestamp at which time it was uh, inserted. As you can see, I, I have inserted in each second is data. As you can see the timestamp. So there is like 1500 data in each second. So there is, I have inserted for 25 minutes in that uh, database. So each second there is uh, one document. If I count the document in the database, you can see that there is 1500 documents here. So now we want to go into a point of from point in time. So how will you verify that we have uh, uh, recovery restored in that point? So let's just randomly select the data. Let's give a name eight to nine. Okay. So we have found this data. So this data was actually taken in this timestamp. So if we can restore in time this timestamp and we have around 829 data in this database, we can say that we have restored in this point of time successfully. So let's, before applying that, uh, let's check that which uh, of the snapshot sh should our operator choose. As we have, uh, as I have said earlier, there is some snapshot in the database that uh, were taken by the uh, uh, that were taken by the backup configuration in the every five minute because we have provided uh, uh, here 
the schedule has five uh, to take the backup every five minutes. As you can see, the timestamp it was taken every five minutes. Okay, so we want to see which uh, of these uh, snapshots will be chosen by our operators uh, using this time. So as you can see, the timestamp is seven fifteen. So it will uh, <coughs> choose a snapshot before that, exactly before that, which is closest to this time. If we check the timestamp, this is the closest timestamp that uh, that we have. So this is the snapshot. So as you can see, here is a component section and the name of the volume snapshot here. So our dread operator should choose this uh, volume snapshot uh, to restore our database restore the first pvc to be exact so let's apply with this timestamp so this is a uh, this is the yml that i am going to deploy so let's change the recovery timestamp here okay i have changed the recovery timestamp uh, let's apply it As you can see, the MongoDB is applied and the first pod is came up in pending state because the PVC is not ready yet. So this is the PVC. So let's uh, check the PVC source. As you can see, the data source of this PVC is a volume snapshot with the name this. If we check the last four digit 4902, which is the one that we have found here in the our volume snapshot, uh, uh, snapshot volume snapshot name. So our operator actually chose this uh, snapshot from all the snapshot, which is the closest to the uh, our recovery timestamp that we have provided. Okay, now let's see if it can uh, re uh, restore the database. As you can see, the first pod is running. If we now exec into this database, it is now a secondary, let's Use the common secondary, okay. Okay. So there is this database test. Now let's use it. Now check the collection. It has a cube to collection. Now let's count the data that it has. So it has already for uh, 29 data <clears throat> because our database is restored because the uplog is also restored now. So it has all the data that we have restored uh, that we wanted to restore. So we wanted to restore till this point, uh, as you can see this uh, QDB collection already has 829 data. Let's wait for our restore job to complete. So as you can see, it's completed. So uh, as you can see, it has the 829 documents in this KubeDB database. So we have successfully restored our uh, replica set into this point of time. Okay, so this is for the end of my demo. Now let's talk about the upcoming features. So currently the uh, MongoDB Archiver only supports uh, replica set database, but we have planned to support MongoDB sharded database too. We'll try to include in a future release. And uh, 
currently we only can take backup using uh, CSI snapshotter, but we have plans to add other methods such as MongoDump so that you can take the backup using MongoDump and restore using Mongo restore, but you can still do it in point in time. Then uh, we want to add support for other KubeDB databases such as MySQL, uh, Postgres, etc. Uh, all those will have uh, uh, CRDs like MySQL Archiver, Postgres Archiver, etc. That will be used to take uh, backup and point in time. Use, will be used to take point in time recovery of the database of those databases. So we haven't released this uh, version uh, of our MongoDB Archiver yet. You can expect it to come at the end of March. So we will announce it in our uh, social media. You will, uh, you can try it then. Okay, now if you have any questions, you can ask, uh, unmute yourself and ask. So it looks like there is no question. So I'm going to hand over to Dipto. Dipto. Uh, so, well, uh, so this concludes uh, today's webinar. And uh, thank you all for your participation. Hope to see you again next time. Our webinars actively scheduled on our website. Visit epscode.com slash webinar to register. Have a good day.